Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Monica Banagdar, your host for this exciting webinar. This webinar has three parts. Part one explores the hallmarks of facial aging. Part two is about the collection of fillers that I use and why I use them. In the last part, I will review some before and after pictures of my work. This is an interactive presentation and I would love to answer your questions. Please submit your questions in the chat box. There will be a live question and answer session following my presentation. I want to empower you by educating you so that you can make the right choice for your aesthetic needs. Okay, so I have two practices called Banactar Aesthetics. The first one is um, Newport Beach, where I've practiced for over 23 years. The second one is in the desert, where I've been for about three, four years and recently moved to a new location in Palm Desert. Um, I'm board certified from the American Board of Laser Surgery. I'm an Allergan Medical Institute faculty teaching other physicians and nurses how to inject Botox and Juvederm fillers. I am the creator of the 5R rejuvenation method, the Amplify filler technique, and the Monbon clinical skincare. Although I'm well versed in devices and lasers, my true love is my injectable practice, assessing a face and in my mind, seeing the enhancement possibilities with Botox and with fillers. Because my entire practice is focused on aesthetic procedures, I perform a lot more non-surgical procedures than the average plastic surgeon or dermatologist. Last year, I injected 65,000 units of Botox cosmetic and over a thousand syringe of fillers. And my lifetime numbers probably exceed over a million units of the muscle relaxers and 15,000 syringes of fillers. So let's get started with what is beauty and what makes a human face beautiful. When you look at a new face, your brain subconsciously decides if it is a youthful face or an old face, if it is a beautiful face or a displeasing face. Our brains are programmed with universal ideal youth and beauty um, standards. Ideal human faces, female faces, have flawless skin, symmetrical features, arched brows, large eyes, small nose, and high cheekbones, full cheeks, and defined jawline. What is aging? We all age and sometimes are resentful of this inevitability, but Aging is a privilege and should be celebrated. With advances in medicine in the last century, we're living longer, disease-free lives. And now, with advances in aesthetics, just during our lifetime, we have the opportunity to look youthful. I say the opportunity because, in essence, aging has become optional. What happens when we age? Aging changes start very early in, um, and are at first imperceptible. Changes pick up speed with time, but the speed of change is not uniform throughout time or throughout your face. Lucky for us, the aging changes have been studied extensively and it turns out that there are a predictable set of changes that happen and so now we can prevent them and also reverse them. Um, genetics play an important role in aging. How these mothers have aged provides a glimpse into how their daughters will age. But as I've said earlier, these changes can be reversed. All right. Let's talk about what happens with um, our faces. There is a triangle of youth and 
it's an upside down triangle as seen in this 26 year old daughter. Um, she has high cheekbones, full cheeks, defined jawline. In other words, she's lifted, contoured, and refreshed. The cheeks are the pivotal part of the youth and beauty formula. In her 64-year-old mother, the triangle has evolved to a right side up triangle. And the mother has flattened cheeks, deepening smile lines, thinning lips, and sagging jawline. She would be ideal for the Fix My Face package. Aging affects all facial layers, including the skin, the fat pads, the muscles, and the bones. Youthful skin is soft, supple, smooth, and well hydrated. Aging skin loses moisture, collagen, and elastin, and all these changes lead to etched in lines and static wrinkles. Lifestyle choices like sun exposure, diet and alcohol and smoking, and stress contribute to aging changes of the skin. There are superficial and deep fat pads below the skin that provide facial volume, contour, and fullness. With aging, the fat pads shrink and sag, um, meaning descend. And this causes sunken eyes, flattened cheeks, folds around the mouth, and jowl formation. Facial muscles below are below the fat pads. Some facial muscles contribute to sagging of the overlying structures as they get thinner and weaker with time. And some facial mus muscles contribute to formation of etched in wrinkles with excessive repetitive contractions. Excessive muscle contractions lead to frown lines between the brows, forehead lines, crow's feet, upper lip lines, and dimpling in the chin. My favorite muscle relaxer is Botox Cosmetic, and my goals with your Botox treatment is to administer the right dose at the right time and at the uh, right frequency so that we prevent etched in muscles from occurring. And if you have already gotten etched in lines, those can be reversed with Botox and sometimes with fillers. All right, so the bone structure gives our face shape and contour. Bony changes are significant and include several changes. The temples hollow, giving the illusion of a peanut head. The brow ridge melts and this loss results in the brow and the upper lid from uh, in becoming heavy and sitting lower without the support of this ridge. The eye socket shape widens, giving the eyes a sunken, tired look. The cheekbone shrinks, resulting in flattening and sagging of the mid-face cheek contour. The upper teeth recede, resulting in the elongation of the upper lip area and formation of smile lines. And lastly, there's significant changes in the jawline. A young jaw has a nice angle resembling a hockey stick. This is, uh, I'm showing you an x-ray of a young and an old um, jaw. And the angle gets wider and wider with aging, almost becoming a U as the face um, skeletal muscle, uh, skeletal bones shrink. And now um, I'm so happy to tell you that we have a new Juvederm filler approved specifically for jaw contour and jawline. So there's some exciting stuff that I'm going to discuss. In this family, there are six fillers. I've arranged them chronologically as they became FDA approved in the US. Each one of them has different characteristics and is used for a different part of the face and has unique qualities. Just like how each one of the Valentino shoes had a specific function, each one of these Juvederm fillers has a specific function. I've used fillers from every company that sells in the U.S. and nothing else compares to the elegance and the performance of the Juvederm collection. So it's really um, one of the exclusive lines that I use. And um, this collection 
It's all made of hyaluronic acid, which is the biggest component of our own collagen. They're all clear gels. The first two, Juvederm and Juvederm Ultra Plus, are chemically similar to each other. And um, I think of them as the first generation fillers. Um, they uh, were FDA approved in the early 2000s. The last four, Voluma, Volor, Volbella, and Volux are the next generation fillers. And um, they are um, very elegant and long lasting. And by far, it would be what I, um, I would pick too if I was going to go on a deserted island um, to work with them. Okay, but let me first tell you about Juvederm Ultra Plus. It is really the workhorse. It's the first one that we had available. It's great for lower face rejuvenation, such as smile lines and marionette lines, Juvederm, and its sister Juvederm Ultra Plus. Juvederm Ultra Plus and Juvederm Ultra, both, um, are very water-loving products, which means they kind of act like uncooked noodles um, in the skin. They attach to water in our tissue, and they expand like when you cook a noodle. And they're great for deep lines and folds um, and moderate to dramatic looking lips. And I'll show you um, an example of dramatic lips. The middle, the top is before the middle is one syringe and the bottom is two syringes. Um, not everyone's cup of tea. I do everything from a very natural under the radar lip um, treatments, which I'll show you what I use to all the way to moderate and dramatic. Okay, then 10 years after the original two were available came Voluma. And this was really a game changer filler because it was the first filler that did something besides just filling. Um, it is also up to now our longest lasting hyaluronic uh, acid filler in the market lasting two years this is a thick gel created for repositioning and lifting the mid face when injected in the cheek region it not only lifts the cheeks it also improves the lower face structures like the smile lines and the jowls when I'm assessing a face, I always start in the mid face with Voluma because it improves both the mid face and lower face, and I end up using less fillers when I fixed the mid face. Volbella is the thinnest gel in the Juvederm family. It um, is FDA approved for lip lines and lip hydration. And also for treatment of under eye hollows. It's my go-to when someone says, I want under the radar lips, I want them to look natural. I don't want anyone to know I did my lips, but my lips are thinning and they're shriveling and we need to do something. Volor um, is kind of in the middle of um, Voluma and Volbella as far as consistency. And I love working with it because um, it fills, but it's so forgiving. It's very elegant. It's longer lasting than um, Juvederm Ultra Plus. It doesn't expand or swell like Juvederm Ultra Plus does. So I can use it more superficially for thinner lines and wrinkles. And it lasts longer, as I said, 18 months versus 12 months. And I used to say um, that Voluma and Volor were the two that I would take to my desert island. Um, and now we have a new kid on the block. Um, at the end of last year, Volox got FDA approved and um, it became available for um, commercial um, use this year. I was um, one of the fortunate um, AMI faculty, Allergan Medical faculty, um, that got to um, actually work with it last year. I love this product. It is a very robust, thick gel, thicker than Voluma, and it's specifically formulated for contouring the jaw and the chin. So, right. so looking at our five mother and daughter duos, each one of these mothers would benefit from 
uh, the Fix My Face package, the first lifting the cheeks, then contouring the jawline and the chin, and then cleaning up the smile lines and the marionette lines. The fun doesn't stop there, though. Um, during the consultation, I do address Botox as well as other areas of the face, such as the temples and the sunken um, uh, temples um, and the sunken eye area and also the lips. Now we're going to see some of my before and afters and see the um, Fix My Face package in action. Um, this is my first before and after. And she had exactly this package. And I lifted her cheeks and contoured her jaw and refreshed around her mouth. Previous to me, she had gone elsewhere and had work done, but wasn't really happy with the results. And I think that she looks fantastic. Um, and still looks like herself. She doesn't look like she had work done. Okay, here's our next patient. She had her cheeks optimized, her jaw and her chin contoured, and she um, had her sunken eyes corrected. And she looks fantastic. Now, if there's anyone out there saying, why do some of these people have makeup on? Um, those of you who've been to me, you have to take your makeup off when I do your injections, but not everybody wants to take their makeup off when they're here just to do their after photos. We love it and appreciate it when they do, but sometimes it doesn't work out. But I think that you can tell, um, if you look where I tell you, uh, I did the work that, yeah, the work shows regardless of whether they have a little bit of lipstick on or not. This gal is very pretty in her before photo, but has lost soft tissue because she's very athletic and um, she is um, volume deficient in her mid cheek and in her lower under eye area and in the marionette area. Her cheeks sit low on her face and are flat. Um, and her lower lids right above the cheeks are very empty. But when you look at the after picture, after we've uh, filled the cheeks, it's lifted and improved the lower lid emptiness, even though I didn't really touch that area. Her jaw angle is enhanced and her smile lines and marionette lines were also addressed. This gal came to me after she lost her husband and needed a pick me up. Um, She's had a lot of work done, she, um, and this is a picture right after an injection, so she's blotchy and red in some areas. Um, she had Botox done. She had her cheeks um, uh, lifted and optimized and lots and lots of correction around her jawline and around her mouth. So she's somewhat... Um, older and had beyond a fix my face package but i just want you to see what the possibilities are um and she's just very happy looks amazing all right um this gal is another example of just the slight difference of filling the cheeks makes in a face. Um, she looks amazing on her after photo and she doesn't look like she's had work done. This gal I wanted to show you to show you what um, correction, full correction of the jawline can do. Um, and it completely changes a face. This um, lovely gal had um, work done by me in the cheeks and the lower face. She looks amazing. Um, and, you know, even her, the way she's taking this after photo with her hair um, all done, it, she just looks so confident and looks just amazing and looks like she's aged backwards. This is a lovely gal who um, worked for me for a while, a total yogi, really deflated mid-face, lower face. Um, 
she didn't have an ounce of fat on her body. We all um, just coveted how fit she is, but um, it takes a toll on the face when you lose weight, which brings me actually to a good um, segue. Um, the new diabetic drugs that are being used for weight loss. Um, people are having amazing results with very rapid weight loss. However, their faces are also falling. So whether you have volume depletion from just aging or weight loss or being athletic, um, non-surgical procedure like an injectable uh, fix my face package is ideal for fixing you up. Okay, I am ready to answer your questions. I'm so excited to see um, what you would like to ask me. The questions, I have to tell you, the questions get smarter and smarter. So um, I love uh, my practice and my patients. You guys are all so smart and um, uh, you just soak all this stuff up. You want to be educated. So it's, um, it's a great, uh, fun place to come to work. And tell me what my first question is. Uh, what areas can you use the jawline filler in? Okay, so the jawline filler, Volux, has been FDA approved for improvement of the jaw contour and the chin. So at this point, we are using it to form an angle um, that has kind of melted down and became a U instead of a hockey stick V. And we are also um, enhancing the chin with it. Those are the only areas that um, it's been FDA approved for. We're trying to emulate bone. So it is a very thick gel. And um, I always say I have to match the um, filler to the thickness of the skin and how high or low I'm placing it in your skin. Yeah, I think that you probably are thinking, well, if it's a thicker gel, then maybe it fills more. And yeah, but I don't want it to show like a um, cat under the sheets, um, a blob under your skin your skin needs to be smooth. And my goal is to use the right filler so that it looks flawless, like you haven't had anything done. What's our next question? Can you tell us about Daxify? Can I tell you about Daxify? Of course I can. Daxify is a new muscle relaxer and it's a longer lasting muscle relaxer than um, Botox, Xeomin, and Dysport. Um, it lasts up to six months and the price reflects that. All right, next. Um, how much time does it take for a full non-surgical facelift and how much downtime? Okay, so someone wants to know how long does a full non-surgical facelift take to do in the office and how much downtime? So um, I have patients that come from out of town and it's they want the one and done. They're going to be here for um, just one office visits. And then I have patients who are wanting to do things gradually so that it's under the radar and um, we do it in several sessions. So if you were going to do everything um, and usually my limit is about like six syringes on one visit to um, limit the swelling and the downtime that you have. Um, you're in the office less than an hour. We um, take photos. Um, then I have an assistant who helps me inject so that as the needle goes out of your skin, um, she is holding and making sure that you don't bruise. My assistant has also got um, a nifty tool called an AccuVein and it shows me, it's a vein finder, it shows me where the vessels are so that I can avoid um, going into a vessel and 
So that way we are preventing bruises. For some of the areas, my assistant also has another nifty tool called a microvibrator where she places it, for example, on the lip area and the vibrations get to our brain uh, faster than the um, discomfort of the needle going into the lip uh, gets to the brain so that it's a more comfortable um, type of a treatment. And so my assistant and I work um, together. You're here in the office for less than an hour. The injections um, are quite fast because I don't want you to be uncomfortable for too long. Um, downtime. Expect some downtime. Volux, we're seeing a bit more tenderness, discomfort, swelling um, after injections. For Voluma, I would say maybe a couple of days that you may feel like, oh, something was done. For Volux, um, double that. Um, if you don't bruise, it's easy breezy. Um, and if you do bruise, um, Hopefully it's not a ginormous bruise because we did everything in our power to control the bruising. And we've got Arnica um, in pill form, in gel form, in cream form to help you um, get through the bruising faster. Okay, next question. When should people start using fillers? When should people start using fillers? Um, well, that is a very good question. Um, our aging changes start in our 20s. I have patients as young as 20s who aren't just enhancing, but they're actually like reversing some of the changes. So um, it used to be that, that the aesthetic demographic of patients who were seeing me were on the older side and uh, the field of aesthetics has become a lot more democratic and I'm seeing patients as young as in their 20s and as wise and as in their 90s. So um, there is no age discrimination. We are an inclusive practice. The next question is, can I have two filler if I have too many wrinkles? If you have too many wrinkles, are you a candidate for fillers? Um, you know, obviously there's a place for non-surgical and there's a place for surgical. Um, and I have told uh, patients that, you know, there would be better better served with surgery. If someone has waited and waited and they have wrinkles, they probably at some point decided that they don't want to do surgery. And so unless there is a medical contradiction, um, I assure you, I can make you look better. Um, just like we saw on that one patient who I showed you her before and after, uh, I mean, she looks completely different. And um, she started out with a lot of wrinkles. So it's the rare person who isn't a candidate. Can you explain the difference between filler and all therapy? Can I explain the difference between filler and all therapy? I would love to. So um, fillers are mostly for volume depletion, for contouring, for lifting. Um, all therapy is a um, treatment that has been around for about 10 years and is no longer the new kid on the block. Um, and 10 years ago, it was the best thing we had for lifting. But the kind of lifting that all therapy gives you is a global um type of lifting we have it we do it but we're only now doing it on the patients who have had it done before and have seen good results and are repeating it once a year honestly i'm not signing up anyone for new all therapy because um i'm very frank about how uncomfortable things are and it's it's a treatment that hurts we medicate, we numb, it still hurts. So 
for my delicate butterflies. I do not recommend it. And if it's lifting that um, you are uh, wanting, let's do an assessment. I'd love to see you assess you. Fillers may be a better choice. Um, and after your filler optimize, um, thread lifts uh, may be another option. Uh, I have multiple, multiple lasers and devices, and we're getting really good results from our CO2 laser Tetra for shrinking and lifting when we combine it with Virtue, the microneedling radio frequency. So I would say that the devices and the injectables um, are completely different and um, as I said, you're all smart. You're all going online and researching the um, available treatments and wanting to do the best um, thing out there for you. And I really want you to um, find your aesthetic ambassador and let them guide you. That's what I do all day long is um, come up with treatment plans, not just for the day, but for um, the quarter for the year um, so that uh, when we look at your first photo of when you started with me and then months later, years later, um, your future photos, you're seeing the difference, you're seeing the improvement and you like your face and you feel very confident. All right, what's our next? Remind us about the eye drops. Uh, remind you about the eye drops? Oh, so the eye drops, um, these became available, I think last year, they're called Upneak, and it is a prescription product that is got an aesthetic use, and um, they're individually wrapped, they come in a box of 45, I believe, um, and you open up the individually wrapped um, a foil and put a drop in each eye up neck works on the Mueller muscle, which is a very thin muscle in the upper eyelid. And for all of us who, um, as we age, our eyelids just kind of sit lower and our eyes look smaller. Um, it lifts the eyebrow, I mean, eye eyelid, and you look like you've got these beautiful doe looking um, young eyes. And um, that's what it's for, up neck. Um, it also, everyone's know, well, does it have side effects? Yes, it will make your the white of your eye more white because it was originally studied for, um, for redness in the eye. And then they found out that it does this miraculous a miraculous lift of the Mueller muscle. So now it's become the primary use of this product. All right, what else? Our last question is, I haven't found a filler that would lift my skin around the mouth yet. I have no wrinkles. I have high cheekbones, nice skin. What should I do? Okay, so we have, um, we have a sneaky client who wants somewhat of a consult without me seeing what they look like. This lovely gal has high cheekbones and no wrinkles around her mouth, but um, she wants to know what filler that can be used for around her mouth. Um, sorry, kind of hard to, to tell you what to do without seeing you, but I'd love to consult with you and um, just to throw it in, uh, I don't know if we're dealing with a resting bitch face. Um, there are muscles around the lip corners that attach to the jawline and do this. Um, you know, is that what you're trying to fix? I've got tricks um, in my bag of goodies for whatever you throw at me. Um, so... I'm sure there's something that I can suggest for you. I just can't do it without seeing you. 
Um, all right. I hope that you liked this webinar. I tried to pack in a lot, tell you about aging, tell you about the different fillers and give you an analogy that like sits so well in my mind, different shoes for different occasions, different fillers for different functions and need, but I'd love to see you and give you an entire program. And when I do my consults, we do the 5R um, consultation. So I tell you about uh, Botox. I tell you about fillers. I tell you about technologies. I tell you about lifting threads. I tell you about skincare. So you get an entire program that will help you not only for one treatment, but for the year to come. And I hope that you take advantage of it. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this webinar.